So hello YouTube. Today we're going to take a look at this SU-76 uh, Russian self-propelled gun from Maquette. Mm. I bought this a long time ago. I still haven't assembled it. I've had it for like 20 years. I bought it when it was in Fort Hood, I believe. Along with a couple of other Maquette. They were so cheap. They were all like $10 or something. Between 10 and $15. And I also had a, a BM... 28.8 and a, a Valentine tank and I still have the two but there's parts missing to both of them this is the only one from the three that's, <coughs> that's still whole so I'm going to take a look at it today I didn't have the instructions, I had to print them offline. Print them from online. And the instructions aren't all that clear, but it's good enough. I've done it before. It's a little hard, especially when you come to these instructions here. Because everything's kind of like bundled, bunched together. So it's kind of hard to see exactly what you're trying to do. But if you have experience building model uh, armor kits and then it's doable yep. and, and look at the mishmash from colors here you have light gray and white and dark gray and medium gray and, and the colors here look kind of weird too they look like swirly plastic on the whole side there's not much to see here on the instructions but Hull, accessories, interior, rear plate, tracks. Um, what can I say? You can't read it. You can barely see what the... Oh, I circled all the numbers because I had to check through and make sure I had all the parts. But I circled the numbers where the I had parts because the parts were there. Luckily, this one's this was whole. No idea. Here, it's six. That's the turret. Turret in the gun. Side plate. Side plate. Fighting compartment. Oh, it looks like it actually might have some interior detail. Muffler exhaust. Not much to see in the instructions, really. These are markings, so Spring 1945 Austria. Winter 1944-1945 in Poland. Summer 1944. Twelve nineteenth. SPG's regiment. 1940, and this is 1945 in Warsaw. So it's showing you the markings with the numbers. That's, that's at least something good. Now, these, these old Marquette models are... They're not the best models in the world. But they do... They do fill together to make something that's decent. And see how thick the plastic is? This is the bottom of the hole. It's a good quarter of an inch thick, this plastic here. And here, Mm -hmm. Really dirty. Mm, these are like uh, the front plate and the back piece. I think this is the front, underneath and the front. This is underneath and the back. And they're they're really thick too. The whole hole is really thick. And there's some flash on it. But these are all hole parts. This is. 
think that here in the front, the front part of the front plate here. I think that is the front plate. And you see how thick the plastic is, which makes it really hard to glue together. I mean, it has more area to work with, but it's so thick and heavy. But uh, but it's all the same size, so in the end, it does fit together. You can see there's one of the fenders broken off of the tree. You see how weird this plastic looks? It's like it's white and black and, and gray mixed together. They ran out of plastic. I did. And just, it does have nice bolt holes here around the things around the suspension you can see here it's nice bolt holes too nice bolt holes here too the hatches look good but the one thing is really missing No, here, back to this part. This molding area here where the plastic has a melted piece of plastic across it. This is kind of like on the uh, the Aurora where the deck was so messed up. It's like that here too. So it's going to have to be... But, but this is easier to fix it. So a flat piece of plastic. It does have engraved pendant lines too. Yeah. On the other side it has deep pin marks. This is for the fighting compartment. This is the, the top. This is the sides and the back. And here's the front where the gun goes. It actually has nice detail for such a cheap kit. I like these. I like kits like this. They're really inexpensive, and once you get it built, it looks like a decent, a decent version of what it's supposed to be. And here's the muzzle brake. And the muzzle brake looks decent actually. There's a bit of flash over everywhere on this kit though. Here. Here. Flash. Hmm. Comes off easily with fingernail. Yeah. Here is You can see it, it broke off the tree here, it's a little damaged. Quite a bit of quite a bit of a flash around it. It's similar to the old Svesta kits, except for the old Svesta kits had a little bit better quality. They didn't have as much flash. They had thick parts too, but not as thick. I'm not sure what these are, but there's a lot of flash around them, and deep pin marks here. But so far, as I've seen all the pin marks on the in are, are are on the inside of the parts, so at least the molding is good. Here's the gun mount. Also flash. I don't see any bolts around it though. This used to usually be here on the outside bolts. At least on every gun mount I've ever seen, the, the gun is bolted into the... Couple more loose parts. 
major flash here. Here's the gun metal. Or the gun you know where the gun sits in. really messy here. It's going to have to be sanded down. Here's a bunch of detail parts. You see some tools. One that's broken. Include a machine gun. A machine gun with a lot of um, flash on it. I mean, this does have a lot of parts to it for a cheap kit. It looks like they tried. I'm not saying they, they, they did it all that great, but they tried. I've seen this before on BT-7. I don't know what they are. It has something to do with the track, probably spanning the track, or, or when you have to change the track, then they can put the sides back together. We had something like that, too. I don't remember what it's called anymore. This has decent detail on these parts. This is all suspension on this tree. And some nice bolt holes around the uh, sprocket covers. Here on the road wheels you have some holes on this side. The other side is blank. The insides. Sprockets are going to require a lot of cleanup. The whole kit's going to require a lot of cleanup. And here we have the tracks and some more loose parts underneath. Actually, the tracks look good, I think. For plastic tracks on such a cheap kit. And I mean, there's so much, so much flash on all the other parts. The tracks look good. There's no flash on them. They're, they're molded nicely, too. No crazy pin marks. It's going to be hard to get them off because it's really thick between here. But it's the only part of the tent that really looks decent so far. It's the tracks. But I think about... You see it has some problems with it. There's a lot of flash. Um, there's a lot of flash. I don't think I don't think there's bolt holes. Over, over. There, yeah, there are in some places like bolts and uh, and panel lines, but I think some of them might be missing. Yeah, on top of this fender. It's also a plastic mark where it melted plastic. And parts are falling off. Like here, there's no panel lines on this whole piece, and it seems like there should be. Either are pa panels or, or bolts or something. Same thing here. No panels, no, no panels, no bolts. But then on other pieces there are there. And see on these plates, on these round plates here, um, there are bolt holes. And here around the suspension there's bolt holes too. But there are also some deep pin marks here on the top that you have to fix.
what can I say about this kit? It looks like all my kit kits look back then. Um, I have recently built, well, more recently built a, I think it was a Panzer 38T from my kit. And it looked really good. It had the interior, nice, nice interior and everything. This, this is like a 20 year old kit. Um, it's not that great. I think it'll build into a nice, I think with a, a lot of cleanup and, and some extra work, it'll turn into a nice one. Because you can see here on the picture, I didn't see these bolt holes on the sides, but they show them here in the picture. And bolt holes, I mean bolt heads. All along here. All along here. Yeah, on the inside. Here's a welding line. <clears throat> so, see if you can find some pictures on the in internet of SU-76M and uh, use it to build this. Because you're going to have to add details, like these bolt heads and welding lines and stuff. They're not in the kit. Not everywhere. Some places, so. The detail is really failing. But I think it'll still build into a nice SU-76. It's definitely not a project for beginners. It's definitely more for advanced. But if you can find these kits still, they're cheap enough to wear, you know, uh, any model builder can take it and and experiment with it and try to improve their technique. And that's all this for this video. Next, we'll be looking at a, a KI-84 Riati Frank from Tamiya. And thanks for watching. Until next time.